Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to begin our service right now by singing our opening chant, Grateful. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling. Grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing. Grateful for the love that's 
hearts in this place grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this We're delighted that you've joined us in person or on Zoom or Facebook Live. Just having you here is wonderful. For those of you who are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you. And so now, let's turn together in prayer. At this holy moment, independent of all other holy moments. I draw my attention to the divine creator and the presence of this one power in my own individual self. Here is where my comfort lies. It can be found nowhere else. My hope and my love dwells in this place within. I have only to focus on it, to bring it to the life I experience. I lift my eyes and I see the peace that surrounds us, the perfect pattern in motion. I don't have to understand it, just acknowledge it. When I do, the guidance becomes clearer and my confusion dissipates. Releasing all doubt, fear, and anguish, letting go of the urge to find comfort elsewhere, I relax in the embrace of the one love, closer than hands and feet. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for the inspired words of our spiritual leader today, Dr. Mark. I release my word into the absolute mind of God with deep, deep, deep conviction. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. You are the face of God.
rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And so now for our congregational song, the first Noel. <laughs> for the next five minutes and so I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra God's the love that I am if your mind wanders just bring it back silently repeating God's the love that I am and I'll bring us out of this meditation in five minutes
It's Christmas time Outside the snow is falling Like a million stars Like a million dreams All dressed up in white I'm writing Christmas cards A joy that's tinged with sadness As I think of friends Some are here and some are gone as our love goes on and on like the snow tonight and the what a family my life has given me from the corners of the earth to the reaches of the sky we touch eternal Some we've lost and some we found As love circles us around In the songs we share And oh, what a family My life has given me From the corners of the earth To the reaches of the sky we touch eternally And though my heart aches every day This Christmas I will find a way To let each face I've ever loved Shine out of me God bless my family so fly, angels of my heart, we'll never be apart. Tonight I say a prayer for loved ones everywhere. You're a part of my family. My life has given me. Wonderful, wonderful, wow. All right, feeling like Christmas now it is. Oh, that was great, Joanne. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam, Karen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy that you are here with us because I hate to be by myself on Sunday morning. So um, today I'm talking about being creative. Um, an inspired mind is a creative mind. 
And so ask yourself, when am I personally inspired? I think it's different for everybody. Not always the same thing inspires the same people. Do you know what I'm trying to say there? So when you're inspired, think about this. What am I doing? Where am I? Who am I with? Hmm? Because I think inspiration, I think, is a function of spirit. It's not a function of our intellect, although I think our intellect uh, circles around, circles the wagons around very, very often. See, I think the divine economy must ne necessitate a divine equality. And what I mean by that is that mind, in its infinite capacities, is equally indwelling all consciousness. God is everywhere equally present in and through all people. Now, we may not know as much as another person knows. Yeah, all right, all right. But our capacity for inspiration is absolutely the same. Everyone has the same capacity for inspiration. So I believe that living creatively is actually linked to living happily. Uh, routine, I think, you know, OK, that's good for efficiency. Um, having a routine, and I certainly have lots of routines in my life, um, that makes life a lot easier for us, certainly. Uh, but ease alone, just for things to be easy, is not our purpose for living. You know, I often hear people say, uh, in my personal life, they would say something like, well, I'm going to do what's easy for me. And that never sat well with me. You know, it's always like, oh, so you're... You're, you're sort of like minimally caring. You don't really care. You kind of just want to look like you're caring because you just want to do what's easy, you know? Uh, ease alone is not our purpose for living. I believe it's a good thing to be exposed to ideas that are beyond our current thinking again and again and again because ultimately what happens is we start to say, hmm, if they could do that, why isn't that available to me? In fact, that is available to me why don't I start to do the things I need to do on the inside so I could start to have some of those experiences on the outside? So in Luke, it says this idea that we all hear this time of year about no room for them in the inn. And I think that this idea of no room at the end is actually symbolic of when we, each of us, has a closed mind that does not want new ideas to enter into it. No, no, no. I know everything there is to ever know. You know, one time in the history of the United States, they were actually ready to close the US Patent Office because they believed that everything good had already been invented, <laughs> that there couldn't possibly be anything else. Like, no. No, we have everything now. There will be no more inventions. There will be no greater good that will ever come into our life. I mean, that's insane to me. You know, the infinite never stops creating. And we are emanations. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. We are emanations of that infinite that never stops creating. If you think about it, God, the infinite, never rests on its laurels. It express, uh, it, it, I believe that God expresses expects, I have rented lips this morning. I don't know what, <laughs> what is going on. God expects us to do the same. See, because we are made in the image and likeness of the infinite thinker forever thinking new thoughts to create new experiences. So we are the means by which earth becomes heaven. It happens through our consciousness. It's not something that happens when you die. It's not a piece of real estate out there past Pomona or something like that. It's not. It's not. You know, it's that we get to experience heaven here right now. And, and how we do that is that we direct our thought in an intelligent way. Right? So Ernest Holmes says the kingdom of heaven is available to us to the degree that we become aware of it. So that means I don't have to do anything to make heaven happen. I just have to open my eyes. I have to see in a greater way. So the, I want to ask you to picture an hourglass. All right. So in that scene in The Wizard of Oz, because all wisdom is contained in The Wizard of Oz, in that scene in The Wizard of Oz where the witch has that big hourglass, you know, that has the red sand in it, and she says, OK, Dorothy, you're out of here when this is over, right? And she tips over the glass. God, that was so exciting. I thought that was the most exciting thing ever, you know? Uh, but if you think of the upper part of the hourglass as the infinite mind of God, the divine mind, infinite consciousness with 
all ideas, all possibilities, all potential. That's the upper part of the glass. And then the bottom part is the world of form, the world out here, humanville. Right? So your consciousness, my consciousness, is that little filter point right there, that little filter point right there where the ideas of above flow down into the world below. Right? So we receive ideas to express them in the world because that is the way God gives to us. God gives to us through the realm of ideas. We pray and God responds to that prayer with an idea. And we pray again and God responds with an idea. And sometimes it's the same idea. And I know what I often do is like, I pray and God gives me the idea and I say, yeah, you got anything else? I don't really want to do that. Oh, come on, you got, you're infinite. You've got to have another alternative. That's not the other thing we have to do. So our consciousness is the filter point where the ideas from the infinite mind are able to flow into the world, right? So if our filter, though, is congested, the, those divine ideas do not flow. Now, what's the decongestant? For us, in the science of mind, prayer is the decongestant that allows heaven to appear on earth. We pray in an affirmative way again and again and again, and our consciousness shifts. See, prayer does nothing to God. Prayer is not about changing something outside of us. Prayer is about changing our consciousness, our thinking, our perception, how we're believing, how we're speaking, how we're showing up in the world. Our old thinking that has produced the congestion has no place in the heavenly consciousness that we seek. See, our consciousness is the determining factor in our experience. Isn't that amazing that it's our consciousness? And I like to say that God is very patient with us. I know that's true because I feel like in my own life, God was very, very patient. I had to screw around for a really long time, you know, and do all kinds of dumb things and make all kinds of stupid, bad decisions before I finally realized, oh, I don't have to keep doing this. You know, I could actually really follow this path. So you don't want to... Uh, do your decongesting just yet? You'd like to stay a little congested for, you know, maybe I'll start sometime in the new year or something like that. Hey, no worries. God is very patient. God waits for our open mind through which it can flow ideas that will make heaven upon earth. So, you know, when we do treatment, when we uh, do our affirmations, all of this is to remove any sense, any belief that there's duality. And what I mean by duality, that there's God and us. There is only God appearing as us. That there is love and us. No, there is only love appearing as us. There is only a unity of good. This is what we teach in the science of mind. So things like health and wealth and love and creative expression are available in a greater way if we, if we will only give up the hurts, the errors of the past, those negative assertions about how we were right and they were wrong and they hurt us so badly we will never be able to get over it. We have to let all of that stuff go so that we can be more flexible. Because in that flexibility, we give the universe a lot of room to create something new. See, you as a being are so much more than your five senses. We're more than our senses are always reporting to us. The senses cannot discern the finer points of, of the spirit. The senses will tell us facts, but they will never tell us what we can be. They will never tell us about our potential, what we are evolving into as a spiritual being. Those are creative ideas that exist in our mind. So what are the creative ideas in you? And say, oh, well, I'm just average, I'm just normal. God never created an average or a normal person, really. Everybody, everybody breaks the mold. What a relief, huh? I mean, nothing will make you ill or broke or miserable quicker than a closed mind, right? You know the old saying that minds are uh, like parachutes, they're best when open, right? Best used when open. So it, it, also, if our mind is closed, think about this, with a closed mind, that, that's going to alienate other people. And if you keep alienating other people because your mind is so closed, it's going to be a really lonely life. And who wants that? Nobody I know. So without creativity and consciousness, I think we're destined actually for monotony. 
And that, to me, is hell on earth. Monotony? Oh, my gosh. When I was younger, um, in high school, one summer, I had um, a factory job in an eyeglass factory. And, um, and I can say it was one of the worst jobs I've ever had <laughs> in my life. Um, because I kind of did this for eight and a half hours a day. And it just went on and on and on. I realize now, because you know, we teach all the time that God can use anything for our good. And part of what that experience was teaching me is I was going to go to college and I was going to graduate from college because I was never going to come back and do this again, you know? And I'm, saying, I'm, going, I'm saving money for college. I'm saving money for college. I mean, with every one of these, I'm saving money for college. And the bell would ring and we'd have a break and I'd run to the break. And the bell would ring and I'd run back from the break so I could do this work because I'm saving money for college. Saving money for college. That was going pretty well for a while. And then I hit another summer where the only job I could find was in a factory again. Only this time now I had progressed, you know, because consciousness is always evolving. So I went from a daytime factory job to a third shift factory job, which was great because it paid significantly more. And so from 11 at night to 7 in the morning, I stood there in a, um, like a big rubber apron and a, a, a shield over my face, and I now did this. <laughs> 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 from 11 at night to 7 in the morning. But again, because consciousness is evolving, consciousness is evolving, I thought, all right, well, if I'm going to do this all night long, I need something constructive to put my mind on. Right? So I would bring in things that I wanted to memorize, whether they were like you know little Shakespeare sonnets or things like that, and I would read them over and over again and think about them and think about them and think about them, on and on, because it seemed like that was a better use, a better use of my time. Um, I also knew that guys would, about 2 o'clock in the morning, would often fall asleep at their machine. And, uh, and I knew the nurse at the factory. She was, she was, a, she was a neighbor of ours. And I knew her, and I had to only hear a couple of stories before I knew that falling asleep at one of those machines was a really bad idea, you know, the injuries that happened. So anyway, I think that when our mind is really closed, I think it's an insult. Uh, insult is maybe strong, but it, to, the, in, to the mind of God that's trying to express through us. To the open mind, all things are possible because all ideas are available, right? So with, with expectancy, I think in curiosity, and inspiration, and a decision, the open-minded person is really pretty invincible. But I think all of those things have to be there. Again, I say you have to have some expectancy, and curiosity, and inspiration, and also make the decision, right? I think every improvement in our, in our world has been accompanied by a decisive mind, really. You know, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. He had to make the decision, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get them out of Egypt. See, because, now, interestingly enough, as I look at that story, though, each individual also had to make a decision to make progress. So some people's decision didn't actually bring them to the promised land. But for some people, it did, right? So negative ideas need negatively conditioned people to exist, to continue, right? But positive ideas need creative thinkers, affirmative thinkers, right? So each of us receives the type of ideas according to our preconditioned consciousness, right? So if you have stinky consciousness, you're going to have stinky ideas, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the way it works, right? But if you have an open, uplifted, inspired consciousness, then those are the kind of ideas that will come to you. you draw, because we all draw unto us our own. We draw unto us that which is most like our predominant thinking. So hear that. It's not like the occasional thought, but it's like our predominant thinking, right? So is it time for a real mental house cleaning? You probably did this when you were young, but I remember growing up 
back east that every spring and every fall, there was a weekend that the kids, we all dreaded because it was spring cleaning and fall cleaning, you know? And it's like things got pulled out of the house and rugs got pulled out and all the drapes came down and all the blind storm windows went up, storm windows went down, Windex was wiped everywhere on every surface imaginable. The house smelled of pine saw and Clorox and Windex for days. And then it was over and we'd say, oh, thank God, we don't have to do this for another six months. But we knew we were gonna do it again in six months. This is the kind of mental house cleaning I'm thinking about for us. Um, we want to rid our consciousness of all those attitudes, all those biases, all those, you know, those hardened, congealed opinions, which actually are an invitation for trouble. Every time we say, well, you know how they are, and you know how people can be, and there's that little tone of disappointment, or they should be different than that, oh, that's going to invite trouble. It is. It's going to invite trouble. So in Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says, with God, all things are possible. I love that statement. I work with that a lot. But you know, it occurs to me that that statement, with God, all things are possible, people hear that and they think, oh, that means I just get to sit back in my lazy boy. Yeah, I'm just going to recline back in the lazy boy. You know, God's going to handle it. God's going to handle it. And say, um, do not think that this means that God is going to do all the work. No. You know, there are no special favors in the universe. You know, we have to be ready and willing to think what we want long enough to get it, right? Because this is good, solid mental work. To pick something, to make a decision, to stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, and not be disillusioned by, by distractions or the naysayers or anything like that. See, the possibilities in the infinite mind are our possibilities, right? And I think we have to accept the possibility, decide on it, right? and believe it in a clear-cut way that it's already done. Decide, believe, no, what did I say? Accept, accept it, decide on it, and believe it. See, God, God's work is to produce ideas. Our work is to accept those ideas, decide, definitely, right? We get to be definite with the infinite here and then reveal those ideas. So let's turn our attention inward for a moment now. Bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing, if you will. Notice the in-breath and the out-breath and just become still with me for a moment as we turn our attention inward to that place where God dwells. In this most holy and sacred moment, in the season that is filled with light, I know that there is only one mind, God, the source and activity of all creative ideas. And this mind is our mind right now. I know that we are one with the mind and the heart of the infinite loving spirit. And I know for each and every one of us today that our consciousness is spirit's beloved creation. In you, in me, God thinks. In you, in me, God feels. I know for each and every one of us that we are an open channel for all spiritual ideas, that our consciousness welcomes them, and our subconscious mind accepts them and acts upon them. There is no mental or emotional congestion in any of us. Everything that would impede the flow of God's ideas through us is now denied in our consciousness. All negative states are now erased and shall act no more. Each and every one of us, we are now the means by which heaven is revealed as earth and earth is revealed as heaven. Our uncongested consciousness is now replete with creative action that produces in our experience greater health and greater wealth, greater love and communication, and full and complete self-expression. I know that this is so for each and every one of us. Our subconscious mind accepts it. And we now include our parents and children, family members and friends, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we affirm God's perfect presence right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So everything that pulls at our attention and says trouble, difficulty, separation, we say God is right there. So everything that comes into mind, 
to all the weather they've been having in Kentucky and everything else around our country. We know the perfect healing already exists in the infinite mind, and we welcome it forward. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is healing and raising up for all of us. And so it is with a grateful heart that I say, thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word. And so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time. I am so blessed. I am so All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Reaching out. 
That was Joanne O'Brien. Wasn't she wonderful? You, you can get her music on iTunes. So now for some announcements. Ways you can make donations. You can call the office, 818-762-76... I mean... All right, let me start again. 818-762-7566. NHCRS.org slash give or text the word give to 818-457-3419. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service, in person, and on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, just move over to Zoom if you want prayer with a practitioner. We had the best holiday party here on Friday night. I hope nobody missed it. But if you did, we're having another one next year and the year after, so you have another chance. I think there was an ugly Christmas sweater contest. I don't remember who won. Are you here? Nobody will admit it. OK. <laughs> Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney, December 15th. The meditation will start at 6.50 and the service is at 7. Her topic this week is a clear and present manger. <laughs> Youth church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service. We welcome youth of all ages. 2022 Journey of the Heart Pledge forms are available online and in the foyer. Christmas Giving Tree event. Thank you to all who participated this year. Our youth Christmas program is today in the sanctuary at 1115. Join us. Bring all the kids you know for a fun and festive event that will include singing carols, telling stories, and a visit from Santa. Mrs. Claus, and some of Santa's elves. <laughs> Grief support group. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winnaker, meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. All new Christmas Eve candlelight service is Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. Join us in person or on Facebook Live or on Zoom for an all new Christmas Eve service that will include beautiful reading, singing, and candle lighting. Child care will be available in the youth church. We look forward to celebrating with you. New Year's Eve burning bowl service and potluck, Friday, December 31st, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Prepare for 2022 by standing in the strength and power of your dreams. Join Reverend Sidney for a guided and sacred ritual of prayer, meditation, and journaling to release 2021. <laughs> Child care will be available in the youth church. After service, we'll have fellowship and a potluck on the patio. Bring your favorite dish to share. 
2022 Gold Sheets. Gold Sheets are available on the patio and on our website. If you are accessing the sheet online, simply follow the instructions. If you get one at church, please complete self-address and stamp and return it to the goals box. We will mail it back to you on December 2022. Our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service every Sunday. Please stop by. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you. Let's all stand now and sing the peace song. Let's do it. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My, life is in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I, never be separate. I, live, in I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I, release all fear. I, am, living I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Mm. Bum, bum, bum.